The evening was settling in, casting a soft glow through the window and illuminating Jeff in a contemplative stance, his gaze locked on a nature documentary. The serene landscapes and the narrator's dulcet tones extolling the virtues of the great outdoors seemed to spark a light in Jeff's eyes, one that I hadn't seen since he discovered the joy of microwave popcorn. Arthur, Jeff began, his voice carrying the weight of a newfound purpose. This camping, it speaks to me. A communion with nature. A test of survival against the elements. We must embark on this quest. I glanced up from my book, skepticism written all over my face. Jeff, the last time you communed with nature, you tried to convince a squirrel to pay you tribute. Undeterred, Jeff was already rummaging through our closet, pulling out an assortment of items with the enthusiasm of a child on a treasure hunt. Preparations must be made. We shall venture into the wilderness and prove our mettle. What followed was a packing endeavor that could only be described as chaotically comedic. Jeff insisted on including a series of bizarre and wholly unnecessary items, claiming them to be essential for our survival. Among these were a cauldron, for brewing potions to ward off mosquitoes, he claimed, a crystal ball, to predict the weather, of course, and, most perplexing of all, a velvet robe emblazoned with stars and moons, for blending in with the night sky, should we need to evade nocturnal predators. I watched, bemused, as Jeff continued to pack with the seriousness of a general going to war, rather than two friends planning a weekend camping trip. Jeff, I'm not sure how to break this to you, but I think a tent and some sleeping bags might be more practical than a cauldron and a crystal ball. Jeff paused, considering my words. Ah, but Arthur, where's the adventure in practicality? Fear not, for I have also procured this. With a dramatic flourish, he produced a tent. But not just any tent. Upon activation, it expanded with a pop and a whir, transforming into a structure that resembled less a camping tent and more a circus big top, complete with garish stripes and a flag at the top that magically changed colors. And how, pray tell, are we supposed to carry this contraption to our campsite? I asked, trying and failing to stifle my laughter. With the power of levitation, naturally, Jeff replied, as if it were the most obvious solution in the world. The day of departure arrived, and our car was loaded with the strangest assortment of camping gear the world had ever seen. Jeff, dressed in his velvet robe and armed with a staff that he insisted was a hiking pole of power, looked more like a wizard embarking on a quest than a camper. As we set off, Jeff's excitement was palpable, filling the car with an infectious energy. He regaled me with tales of legendary outdoor adventures, involving heroes who braved the wilds with nothing but their wits and magical artifacts. And so, Arthur, we too shall write our names in the annals of camping history. I couldn't help but smile at his enthusiasm, despite the absurdity of our preparations. As the city gave way to the countryside and the concrete jungle was replaced by the lush greenery of nature, I realized that, practical or not, our trip was going to be one for the books. After all, with Jeff's magical mishaps and my attempts to steer us towards some semblance of normalcy, our venture into the wild was shaping up to be anything but ordinary. And as the first signs for our camping destination appeared on the horizon, I braced myself for the adventure ahead, knowing full well that with Jeff by my side, the wilderness didn't stand a chance. The journey to our chosen campsite a picturesque clearing nestled within a dense forest was uneventful, or as uneventful as a trip could be with Jeff periodically attempting to enchant the car for smoother travel, resulting in a few unexpected detours through fields of bewildered cows and one very surprised cornfield. Upon arrival, Jeff surveyed our surroundings with the critical eye of a conqueror gazing upon his new domain. This, he declared, spreading his arms wide, is where we shall make our stand against the wilderness. I nodded, amused by his theatrics. Let's just hope the wilderness is ready for you, Jeff. Our first task was to set up the tent, a process that, under normal circumstances, would involve unzipping a bag and following some straightforward instructions. However, with Jeff involved, normal was a word that had long since been banished from our vocabulary. 
with a dramatic wave of his staff, the aforementioned hiking pole of power. Jeff summoned the tent from its container. It burst forth not with the simplicity of poles and fabric, but with the extravagance of a grand reveal at a magic show. In a matter of seconds, what should have been a modest two-person shelter transformed into the aforementioned circus big top, complete with its own internal lighting system that cast an otherworldly glow. Jeff, I'm not sure the campsite rules allow for whatever this is, I said, eyeing the tent that seemed to hum with magical energy. Nonsense, Arthur. Who wouldn't want the luxury of a castle tent in the great outdoors, Jeff retorted, clearly pleased with his handiwork. Next came the task of starting a fire, a crucial step for any camping endeavor. Jeff, ever eager to demonstrate his mastery over the elements, insisted on taking the lead. After a series of elaborate hand gestures and an incantation that sounded suspiciously like a recipe for roast chicken, a small fire spirit appeared, dancing above the fire pit. Behold, Arthur! Fire conjured from the ether itself, Jeff proclaimed proudly. The fire spirit, however, seemed more interested in performing a series of acrobatic flips than in igniting our carefully assembled pile of firewood. Um, Jeff, any chance you could ask your friend there to focus on the task at hand? I asked, trying not to laugh at the absurdity of negotiating with a fire spirit for something as mundane as starting a campfire. With a bit of coaxing and the promise of a marshmallow, Jeff managed to persuade the spirit to lend its flames to our cause, and soon we had a roaring fire, albeit one that occasionally changed colors or emitted small fireworks when the spirit got overexcited. As night fell, our campsite was a beacon of light and laughter in the dark forest. The big top tent stood proudly among the trees, our fire crackled merrily, and the occasional pop of magical fireworks lit up the sky. It was, in every sense, a Jeff-style camping experience. Sitting by the fire, roasting marshmallows, which, thanks to Jeff's enthusiasm, occasionally floated away to join the fire spirit in its aerial acrobatics, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of contentment. Despite, or perhaps because of, the chaos and magic, there was nowhere else I'd rather be. Arthur, Jeff said, his voice softening as he gazed into the flames. This is truly the life, isn't it? I smiled, watching a marshmallow perform a loop-de-loop -loop before gently landing on my stick. Yes, Jeff, it really is. And as we settled in for the night, with the sounds of the forest around us and the glow of our enchanted campsite keeping the darkness at bay, I knew that this was only the beginning of our wilderness adventure. Little did we know, the real magic was yet to come. The evening had descended into a comfortable silence, the only sounds being the crackling of the fire and the distant hoot of an owl. Our circus-like tent cast a warm glow in the clearing, a beacon of civilization, or at least our version of it, in the midst of the wilderness. Jeff, ever the nocturnal creature, seemed energized by the night, his eyes scanning the dark forest with an excited anticipation. Arthur, do you feel it? Jeff whispered a note of excitement in his voice. The call of the wild, the mystery of the night. There are secrets here, waiting to be discovered. I was about to suggest that the only thing waiting for us was a good night's sleep when a sudden rustling in the bushes caught our attention. Jeff perked up, his staff at the ready, as if expecting a band of marauding goblins to emerge. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and Jeff's unwavering confidence, we ventured towards the source of the noise. The beam of light cut through the darkness, revealing a pair of wide, curious eyes set in a face that was unmistakably not human. The creature, covered in thick fur and standing on two legs, bore a striking resemblance to the legendary Bigfoot. Jeff's reaction was immediate and enthusiastic. A fellow cryptid. Greetings, noble creature, he boomed, stepping forward with open arms. The creature, startled by Jeff's booming welcome, let out a surprised yelp and vanished before our eyes. One moment it was there, and the next, gone. Its presence betrayed only by the rustling of leaves. Ah, a shy one, Jeff chuckled, undeterred. 
He began making a series of bizarre noises, ranging from high-pitched chirps to low grumbles in an attempt to communicate. I glanced at Jeff, bemused by his efforts. I'm not sure if Bigfoot speaks Jeff, you know. To our astonishment, the creature reappeared a few feet away, seemingly intrigued by Jeff's attempts at conversation. It cocked its head, listening to Jeff's cacophony of sounds before attempting to mimic them, resulting in a comical exchange that sounded more like an off-key symphony than a dialogue. Encouraged, Jeff tried a different approach, extending a marshmallow on a stick towards the creature as a peace offering. The Bigfoot-like cryptid, its curiosity peaked, slowly approached, and with a swift motion, grabbed the marshmallow, stick and all, before disappearing once again, leaving behind a ripple of laughter in its wake. Seems we've made a friend, I remarked, watching as the creature played a game of now you see me, now you don't, blending seamlessly into the night only to reappear moments later in a different spot, each time a little closer, its movements imbued with a mischievous grace. The night turned into an impromptu game of hide-and-seek, with Jeff and the cryptid engaging in playful antics. Jeff, fully in his element, conjured small illusions, glowing orbs of light that hovered in the air, to the creature's delight. It leaped and swatted at them like a cat chasing laser pointers, its previous caution replaced by childlike wonder. As the game wound down, the cryptid, now seemingly comfortable in our presence, settled at the edge of the firelight, watching us with an expression that could only be described as contentment. Jeff, beaming with pride at having bridged the gap between man and myth, declared, See, Arthur, all it takes is a bit of patience and understanding, and marshmallows. After our unexpected game of hide-and-seek with the cryptid, a newfound sense of camaraderie settled over our campsite. The creature, having shed its initial wariness, lounged near the fire's edge, its eyes reflecting the flames with a gentle curiosity. Jeff, always the host, decided this called for a celebration, a feast to honor our new friend. With marshmallows as the cornerstone of peace, imagine what a banquet can achieve, Jeff exclaimed, rummaging through our supplies with a magician's flair. Soon, an array of snacks, more suited to a child's birthday party than wilderness survival, was spread out on a makeshift tablecloth of woven moonbeams Jeff conjured. The cryptid, intrigued by the array of unfamiliar foods, tentatively approached, sniffing at the offerings before tentatively trying a chip. The crunch seemed to delight it, and soon it was munching away with abandon, occasionally emitting pleased grumbles that Jeff took as signs of culinary appreciation. Our friend here has quite the palate, Jeff observed, himself indulging in a s'more with an enthusiasm that matched the cryptids. As the night deepened, Jeff, ever the storyteller, decided it was the perfect time for tales of adventure and mystery. With the cryptid as our captive audience, Jeff launched into a series of stories that ranged from his exploits in the underworld to the more mundane, but no less perilous, adventures of navigating the human world. The cryptid, for its part, seemed fascinated, its earlier mischief replaced by a rapt attention. It even attempted to contribute, emitting a series of growls and gestures that Jeff interpreted with dubious accuracy as tales of its own. Our friend here, Jeff declared, once outsmarted a band of trolls by challenging them to a dance-off, an inspired strategy, if I may say. I chuckled, watching the cryptid nod and grunt in what I assumed was agreement, though the thought of trolls dancing was enough to make anyone question the accuracy of Jeff's translations. As we roasted marshmallows, our makeshift peace offering turned snack. The cryptid seemed to grow more reflective, its playful demeanor giving way to a somber quiet. Through a combination of gestures that even I could understand, it conveyed a sense of being lost, of wandering too far from its familiar haunts and struggling to find the way back. Jeff, ever the empath, was quick to offer his assistance. Fear not, noble cryptid, for I possess the magical means to guide you home, he proclaimed, standing up with a determination that only slightly wavered when he tripped over a log. What followed was a series of magical attempts that were as well-intentioned as they were chaotic. The first spell, meant to conjure a guiding light, instead produced a swarm of luminescent butterflies that fluttered around the cryptid's head much to its delight but little practical use. 
The second attempt, a spell to reveal the path home, momentarily turned the ground beneath us into a disco floor, complete with flashing lights and a beat that had us all tapping our feet, the cryptid included. A slight miscalculation, Jeff admitted, scratching his head as the forest around us boogied down. It was the third spell, however, that truly captured the spirit of the evening. With a deep breath and a more focused intention, Jeff summoned a gentle shower of marshmallows from the sky. A magical manifestation of the sweetness of home. The cryptid, its eyes wide with wonder, danced beneath the falling treats, its earlier melancholy washed away by the joy of the moment. Home is where the heart is. And sometimes... Where the marshmallows are, Jeff mused, watching our cryptid friend frolic under the marshmallow rain. As the spell wound down and the last of the marshmallows settled softly on the forest floor, the cryptid, now visibly content and at ease, seemed to recognize a familiar path revealed by the moonlight filtering through the trees. With a series of affectionate grunts and a final, lingering look at our campsite, it ambled off into the night following the trail that would lead it back home. Jeff and I sat back down by the fire, the remnants of marshmallows around us, a sweet reminder of the night's adventures. You know, Arthur, Jeff said, gazing into the flames, the wilderness teaches us many things, about survival, about beauty, and most importantly, about friendship. I nodded, the warmth of the fire and the magic of the evening wrapping around us like a cozy blanket and it teaches us that no matter how far we wander, there's always a way back home. As we settled in for the night, the forest around us alive with the sounds of its nocturnal inhabitants, I realized that this camping trip, with its unexpected guest and magical mishaps, had been a true adventure. A story of laughter, wonder, and the discovery of common ground in the unlikeliest of places. And as I drifted off to sleep, the memory of a cryptid dancing in the marshmallow rain etched in my mind, I knew that these were the moments that made life truly magical. The first light of dawn crept softly through the trees, gently nudging us awake. The campsite, still dotted with the remnants of last night's marshmallow rain, bore the marks of our extraordinary encounter. Jeff, ever the early riser when adventure beckoned, was already up, poking at the embers of our fire lost in thought. Arthur, do you suppose our friend made it back safely? He mused, casting a glance toward the path the cryptid had taken. His concern was genuine, a testament to the bond formed over shared stories and magical, marshmallow-filled moments. I'm sure of it, I replied, confidence bolstered more by hope than certainty. Your spell showed him the way. Besides, he seemed like a creature capable of navigating more than just the forest. Jeff nodded, satisfied. True, true. And now we must navigate our way back to civilization. But first, we dismantle our grand abode, he announced with a grandeur that seemed almost comical given our surroundings. Dismantling the tent castle proved to be a task far easier said than done. With a flick of his wrist, Jeff attempted to reverse the enchantment. Instead of neatly collapsing, however, the tent began to rotate slowly as if considering transforming into something else entirely. After a moment of tense anticipation and a few more cautious spells from Jeff, it finally conceded, folding back into its mundane form with a reluctant sigh. Packing up the rest of our gear, we took a moment to look around the clearing. The forest, with its canopy of green and gold, felt like a friend bidding us farewell. Jeff, with a respectful nod to the trees, murmured a spell of thanks. An ancient demon tradition, he explained, for honoring the spirits of the wild. The drive back was quiet, a peaceful contrast to our journey out. Jeff, behind the wheel, navigated the winding roads with a newfound appreciation for the simplicity of human travel. The car, devoid of enchantments, hummed along, carrying us through landscapes that now felt familiar, imbued with the memory of our recent adventure. As the city skyline came into view, Jeff broke the silence. Arthur, do you think the cryptid will remember us? He asked, a hint of wistfulness in his voice. I think so, I said, smiling at the thought. How could it forget the demon and human who brought a marshmallow rainstorm to the forest? Jeff chuckled, the sound rich with warmth and contentment. 
Indeed. And I shall not forget him either. Our camping trip may have ended, but the adventure, the true adventure, is in the friendships we forge along the way. Pulling into our driveway, the house welcoming us back with its familiar embrace, we unloaded the car, each piece of gear a reminder of the experiences shared. The tent, the enchanted flashlight, even the unused cauldron, all were tokens of a journey that had taken us beyond the realm of the ordinary. As we settled back into the comforts of home, the adventure behind us, and the promise of future escapades ahead, I realized that Jeff was right. The wilderness had taught us much, not just about survival or the cryptids that roamed the shadowed paths, but about the magic that dwells in the heart of friendship. Our journey into the wild had been a quest not for conquest, but for connection. And as we sat there, sipping tea and sharing a quiet moment of reflection, the world outside seemed alive with possibilities, a vast, uncharted map of adventures yet to come. With Jeff by my side, each one promised to be a story worth telling, a memory worth cherishing. So, here's to the wild, to the friends we find in the most unexpected of places, and to the journeys that await. For in the end, it's not just about the destination, but the laughter, the wonders, and the companionship we find along the way.